which consciousness, according to Schwartz de Lubis, described as no more, is described as no more than a mental projection of what a man believes himself to want and do. The soul in its various dimensions is conceived by the ancients as the most explicit description of the Egyptian conceptualization of human psychology. Reason to believe that the, the level of understanding of consciousness was so vast that many of the images of the topographical as well as the political structure of Egypt reflected a concept of consciousness. For an example, uh, unfortunately Richard King is not going to be here, but he was going to talk about the symbolism of the crown. The crown, the crown of Upper and Lower Egypt, in many ways reflects a motif of duality coming together. The whole idea of the unification of Egypt, as symbolized by the wearing of the double crown, probably foreshadowed by several thousands of years the recently discovered reality of the duality of the hemispheres of the brain which deal with different levels of consciousness in the physical parallel. That somehow the idea that there's a left brain and a right brain which operate in complementary means of consciousness was probably very clearly reflected in the idea that Upper and Lower Egypt consistently reflected variations in the kinds of emphasis of the consciousness of the people. Upper Egypt dealing with very deeply into the spiritual realm, not to exclude the material, but the spiritual was clearly the vestiges, the, the, the rudiments of what was there. We find that the major uh, uh, remains of the major buildings, the pyramids and so forth, are in Lower Egypt. I'm sorry, the other way around. Uh, no, that's right, Upper and Lower Egypt. That somehow we have there the whole concept that there is where the more rational, analytical kinds of processes were taking place. So we have the spiritual and the material, but not working at odds, but in concepts of unification. And it was when Egypt was unified that Egypt was able to advance the farthest because they brought together the dualities of consciousness and made them one. The presence of the Uraeus or the serpent on the, on the, on the, the double crown of the, uh, uh, of the pharaoh symbolizing, of course, the protrusion and the extension and the projection of the pineal, which is the house of the soul, which means that the dual consciousness is guided by the light which comes through the eye of the Uraeus, which stands as the light to the soul. So this idea which runs through all vestiges, the papyri versus the lotus, the lotus being the flower of Upper Egypt and the papara being the flower of Lower Egypt. That somehow again reflect the differences in terms of what causes the papyrus to grow and what causes the lotus to grow. Again, the reflection of the kind of differences and the duality of consciousness which existed there. The idea is, is that most of this stuff they think they are discovering simply represents their desperate attempts to try to regain what they lost when they went astray. The soul is the fundamental subject of study for these wise men of ancient Kemet. They knew that if you understood the soul, the behavior would follow. They understood that if you could understand the true nature of man, then it would simply be a matter of time before the behavior came in line. Those of us who are concerned about dealing with the mental problems which are massive among the ex-slaves here in North America and the ex-colonized people of the continent itself, and they are just as thick as we are, they were slaves, they were, they were colonized, but it's the same mental problem, a mental problem which makes us unaware of the nature of ourselves. And since we are unaware, therefore we are crazy. And I don't mean just crazy in the Western sense, I mean crazy in the universal sense. And the, the solution to that is to begin to re-emerge ourselves, immerse ourselves in the higher knowledge of ourselves.